Welcome back, foul mouth fishing. Oh, you hookaholics. So, it arrived. I'll be honest, it arrived uh, two days ago. <laughs> but uh, unfortunately, I didn't have time to get this video out. So, our mystery tackle box elite for July has finally come to video. <clears throat> so, uh, if you don't know mystery tackle box, you've been living under a rock. No, this is a uh, monthly subscription for bait and tackle. Um, typically, every month you get a supply of all kinds of different baits, um, different main main name manufacturers, as well as some in-house uh, Carl's Amazing Baits or Catch Co. Company baits, um, baits under contract with Mystery Tackle Box and other manufacturer names. Um, but this is uh, this is the July box. So uh, without th further ado, I'm cracking into it with us. So, what do we got this month? Let's see. As always, uh, we're going to have in our box a Dibbles Digest. So, Dibbles Digest is this little pamphlet they throw in. Uh, gives you tri ticks, trips, and techniques. Um, Frog Fishing 101, how to fish a swimming jig in two minutes. Um, so, you got a little how to frog fish, how to fish a swim jig. And then we've got uh, match the species to the fun fact. So they got a list on this side. So this is good, especially if you have youth anglers. You got a little trivia, and you can match, you know, species um, traits with largemouth, smallmouth, crappie, peacock, bass, muskie, carp, and catfish. Everything on there I fish for except peacock bass, because there's not a big peacock bass population here in New Jersey that I'm aware of. So uh, maybe if I take a trip down to Florida, I can hook into some of those. Uh, next in the box is a what's in your box card. Um, this gives you a rundown of all the baits and their re retail value as they assess them. So uh, we'll skip over the, uh, the inadequacies and we'll jump right into it right now. Um, normally there's a sticker. There might be one in here somewhere. I just I don't see it on the top of the box. So hopefully it's in the box. Uh, or this will be the second time MTB has shorted me a sticker. Only this time I'm, I'm expressing it. Again, congratulations. Uh, for the uh, the winner of that trivia question. Dual Hardcore Crank. So, from Dual Realis, Dual Brand. Um, this is a JDM style bait. And it is a Crank Plus One Floating Crank Bait. It's a half ounce. Let's see what the dive characteristics are. Casting distance is, you got 35 meters on this with a depth of 3 to 6 foot. Um, oh, 3.6 3 feet. Okay, so it's a three, three foot, three and a half foot diver. Um, JDM product, nice colors. One of my favorite patterns is those, uh, those like gun metal color, gray, black, silvers. Those kinds of colors I like because you get the silver flash, like a shiner, but then you also have a dark color, um, you know, coming across for the fish in, in muddier water and then shine in muddy and clear water. Nice little rounded bill. Again, it's uh, not much of a knock. I don't know if that's just the hardware. There might be a small knocker in there. A relatively quiet bait. Not bad. Dual does make pretty good stuff. And uh, this is the most expensive item in the pack this month. So $14.99 they have this dual hardcore. Again, it is a Japanese import bait. so And it's a major manufacturer that I'm... Well aware of, and I do have a lot of stock in, uh, trust in, uh, in catching bass on these. So that's cool. $14.99. Next, Guggen Squad. Now this is a famous YouTube group of uh, anglers that got together and started a social media bonanza. Um, and now Catch Co. Company works with their name and puts out baits distributed under their icon and their name. This is the Guggen Squad's Filthy Frog. Now this is the first frog that I have from the Guggen. So I got a bunch of Guggen baits. I'm going to make a video of me fishing with just Guggen squad stuff. Um, but I didn't have a topwater frog. I have jig heads. I have their worms. I have their bandito bug and that kind of stuff. Their soft plastics. But I did not have uh, their topwater. So this is interesting. And it'll be... I am a definite lover of frog fishing, topwater blow-ups, pencil poppers, walking baits, stick baits, those kind of things I like. So it'll be interesting to see how this works, how this walks. Typically, I always say in these when I buy frogs, 
I don't give a crap about that. All I care about is that, because that's what the fish see swimming across the top of the water as they're looking up. All they see is the belly. Now, there are some really good brands that actually will take the side design and bring it down, um, or even do like a bluegill pattern on the bottom because a dying bait fish falling on its side, fluttering, you'll see that pattern, that bluegill pattern. That's pretty cool. This one's just a straight white bone color. Pretty darn, pretty darn soft. I actually, I do like the, uh, I like the softness. I like the texture. It's not the softest frog I've ever had in my hands, but I definitely do like the texture. Um, hooks are needle sharp. Guggen Squad puts their little, or Catchco has the manufacturers put this uh, little Guggen's GS emblem, their famous uh, trademark emblem, inside of the eye. Um, I will trim those skirts down. I don't. I know a lot of people are like, oh, well, they do it perfectly. It should be trimmed straight to the eyelet where you tie, your line tie. I trim my skirts even shorter than that. I basically go just behind the eye here. That's about where I trim my skirt. So this is about, you know, a half inch longer than I would go. I'd stop here, and they run them all the way to the, to the line tie. Most people fish them to the line tie. I just like a little shorter uh, shorter leg. The one thing I will say I can I do occasionally depending on the frog um, This is a pretty well veed frog, so it should walk pretty well. They put uh, Shrink ramp on the back here to help reduce the amount of water that gets inside infiltrates the body of the frog So it's easier to stay afloat and they have their weight seated back further in the tail, which I do like but occasionally I will trim one about a quarter of an inch longer than the other and that will actually cause enough drag on the one side on the longer side that walking the bait is a little bit easier for a novice angler so if i was you know taking somebody out who doesn't really frog fish i'll take their skirt and i'll cut a quarter inch or, or so off of one side more than the other and uh, let them cast that out and then teach them the twitching technique to walk the bat the bait back and forth and that little bit of extra drag on the water surface will help it kick harder to one side then then when they reel it straight it'll straighten back out and it'll kick back to that one side it helps teach them and train them a little bit better on walking a bait um, not bad not bad at all i'm actually pretty darn impressed finally having one in my hands uh, we'll see how that works out actually on the water the guggen squad filthy frog eight dollars and 99 cents next up bill lewis the man the myth the legend leader of the actual rattle trap this is his mr6 so this is another crankbait uh, this is the Mark Daniels Jr. Sig signature uh, series, uh, half ounce, two and three quarter inch. Oh no, excuse me, two and a quarter inch. And this is another six foot diver. If I can get it out of the packaging. Now this I like. This is kind of like the hunch. Um, I like this design. It's a flat side crank bait, which flat baits are always great. And I like this hump design. The, these, the hunch was a good brand. Uh, bait that I used to love um, to fish, so I'd be interested to see how this runs. Uh, again, is that again those colors I like the, the pale whites or silvers on the bottom and dark skin uh, on the back. They're calling this color Silverado, mid six foot range. Again, um, what was the Guggen Squad? I'm still saying it's bone. Guggen Squad color was bone. Yeah, see, I was right. <laughs> Uh, they have this one for sale at $7.99. Not bad. Again, I like uh, a, a nice flat side crankbait. Um, it's got a nice bill, thicker on the, on the end, so I'm not worried about it snapping off or hitting, you know, chipping away. And I like the detail on the gill plates. It is, you know, three-dimensional. You do have that gill plate, and the eyes pop out. It is really uh, nicely done. Nicely done bait. That's going to be fun. That's going to my crank box. Definitely. Next, from Jawbone. Uh, Jawbone Tackle Company. This is called their Death Wish. Jawbone, Jawbone, Jawbone. Ooh, I don't know what that is. It's elliptic jigs. Death Wish. Death Wish. Ah, all the way at the bottom. So, Death Wish. Lunkers beware. Hand-poured flukes. Little bitty flukes. I like the little mean eyes in them. So that's pretty cool. It's got a little like uh, half crescent eye. Gives it a little bit of a attitude. Let's see. That's stapled together. So that means that I could probably peel it apart in two segments. Look at that. Let's get you out of here. Get one out of the 
package. Holy crap. I hate blister packs. So, let's see what we got here. It's a pretty nice, nice silica, or nice uh, soft plastic. Ooh, I like that. It's got a hook, hook slot in the bottom. So, it's easy for your EWG to, uh, you know, to slide in and out so you get a good penetration, good hookup ratio. Um, they've got this Jawbone Death Wish for $6.36. Not bad. It was a two-inch bait, give or take. Um, do they give any information on it? Color, anything. Uh, three and a half inch swim bait. Comes in four. Color is corpse. Okay. <laughs> corpse. You got a clear plastisol with silver flake on the bottom and your pearlescent top. Uh, creamy pearl blue, white on the top. Gives you that nice rainbow effect, that green blue hue, which I do like also. Um, not bad. Doesn't have a whole uh, a whole lot of uh, scent to it. Mostly a plastic scent. Thing you will say is Jawbone Lure Company is, if I remember correctly, the Dick's Hard or Dick's uh, Saw, uh, Sporting Goods brand Jawbone. So Jawbone Tackle Company out of uh, Coropolis, Pennsylvania. Um, I think that's Dick's brand, if I do recall. Not bad. Jawbone again, six thirty six. Uh, next, Perfection Lures Football Jig. Now, this I know right off the top. I'm not a huge fan of David Dudley, but I am a huge, huge fan of David Dudley's jigs. Um, Perfection Lure Company worked with David Dudley to create these. They are, I call them the alien wear of, of jig construction. They are a stand-up jig that has little pa uh, like antennae on the bottom so that when you're running this on, on the bottom be it soft cover or rocky bottoms or what have you, these two little antenna will make sure that every time this jig lands on the bottom or you're running it across, these little feet here will tick, tick, tick across the bottom, but it makes sure that every time that sucker is going to land facing up. They perfect jig for any craw trailer. Even cheap craw trailers will always have the perfect attack stance when you're running these. So for that... I give a huge kudos to Dudley for uh, for that invitation for that invention uh, for working with their team and creating these stand up jigs. Um, nice wire or excuse me uh, nylon weed guard, stout hooks always. They always put really good sturdy hooks on these. This is a football jig with a thirty degree tie. I'm gonna say maybe twenty two off the face. Uh, not bad, not bad. And I do like that their jig heads have the cove where the line tie goes in. So it's not just a tie sticking out and it's not a recessed tie. It's actually cove, so you get less line chafing. And because it, the, the line knot actually seats behind the head of the jig a little bit, as you're running this into cover and taking it off of hard pack rock on the bottom or what have you, rip wrap, um, it's going to protect that knot from getting banged up and, and tinged against the side of the, uh, of the tie eye. So that's actually also another good part of the, uh, the design of those jigs. Again, that Perfection Lures is $5.99. Okay, next up, 10,000 Fish, another Catchco brand, and everybody in this month got these. Mine happened to come in the Sungill color, 4.75 inch, and this is their, what do they call this again? Yodo Worms. Yodo Worms. Cool thing about these, they have four independent hook tie points, or excuse me, hook, hook, um, gaps, hook, uh, cutouts, so that when you're rigging this, and there's a bunch of different ways to rig it, but when you're rigging this, you can rig it on any face, all four facets. So it's coved out for your hook on the bottom, it's coved out for your hook on the top, and it's got a hook cove out on both flat sides. So they, they cut it on all four sides. So you can fish this on a hook with the dark color facing down, with the light color facing down, fish it sideways, either direction. Um, nice, nice head. I like it. It's a perfect size for most swim jigs. They're going to butt up nice and flat and flush. And it's actually doubled up. So you got a little head here. A little closer. You got the little head here, which is good for smaller jigs, even football, uh, uh, little shaky head jigs and stuff like that. Then you've got this little cove here that you could cut off and then that is a slightly larger gap for a swim jig um, more like uh, you know your fish head 
style swim jigs. It doesn't have a fluke. It has a little whip tail, which is all the rage for finesse. Again, this is going to be great on a scrounger, great on a chatter bait, uh, because any bait that has a tiny little tail, uh, it'll match that vibration of that chatter bait, and it'll react with that chatter bait, as opposed to a lot of you know, when the chatterbait first came out, people weren't really fishing these tiny, thin, finesse-style tails on their on their trailers. They were fishing big Kitex and, and and all, and hard tails and paddle tails. And the problem with that is uh, the paddle tail causing drag imparts an opposite thump. You know what I'm saying? So as the paddle tail's trailing behind, a lot of people really didn't realize how much that drag on the back of the chatterbait. The chatterbait's in the front vibrating like this, and this paddle tail's in the back doing a, a slower walk, and it's actually, it's going to cause your chatterbait to drop a little bit in the water column. It's harder to pull it through cover, um, especially because I like to fish chatterbaits through grass lines or just above grass lines, um, and you do get a lot of monk on them, but do, using a larger paddle tail or hardtail, it would drop it down in that grass when I was trying to reel it just above and skim the surface. So switching over to a finesse worm is what I actually started using with a thin finesse uh, tail. I could reel at the same reel speed that I like, and it wasn't dragging it under. It wasn't doing one of these in the water. It was just ticking away, and it would stay above that grass line, which definitely was uh, a help to me. Um, so that's a little word to the wise. Try finesse jigs or finesse uh, trailers on your on your chatterbaits. See the difference between. Uh, a larger paddle tail, uh, Kitek, and then something like that, the Yoda Worm. All right, that one is $5.29. That's an actually good pa uh, good price. It's a four-pack. It would be nicer if it was a... S oh, wait, one, two, three, four, four... It's a six-pack. Okay, six-pack. So, yeah, that's an excellent price. I like that price point a lot. All right, I thought it was like a four or something like that. Then for five bucks, I'd be like, yeah, twenty-five each is kind of pricey, but six for five twenty-nine. yeah, I, I can deal with that. Uh, especially with the massive design characteristics. It also has those flutes uh, so that it catches a lot of water, does a lot of water displacement, and it is scented. Lifted jigs. Lifted jigs, we got ourselves a simple little swim jig, quarter ounce in red gill. So you've got that brown bur burnt umber with the red, and then you got a little bit of a, uh, I want to say like a day glow, uh, glow in the dark yellow, like you'd see on a glow in the dark uh, you know, sticker. Uh, with red striations in that, and some little red flash uh, on it too. I like that. Quarter ounce. I fish quarter ounce jigs all the time, especially in uh, shallow water. I like quarter ounce, three sixteenths. Not bad. Not bad at all. The lifted jigs SLM, which they call the slim, because um, I'll pull it out. The uh, the head on it is very narrow, so this is uh, it's not like your typical swim jig, which is kind of keeled and round. This is keeled, but it's flat-sided and very, very narrow. So this is probably really good fishing around docks, pilings, uh, what have you. You can get it up under there and really get tight to things. Uh, just make sure your hook's not completely exposed because you don't want to get hung up on the side of a piling and lose your jig. Uh, I've lifted jigs, $4.99. Lake Fork Tackle. Everybody seems to have gotten one of these in these boxes this month. Uh, Lake Forks Tackle Magic Fry. It's just basically a worm. Um, again, with that, that little slinky style ribbed, just like the Yoda worms. Um, perfect on the drop shot, perfect on the wacky rig, uh, because it's got that center cove that you put your wacky rig on. Your hook in there, and it's just going to bounce back and forth. Perf you know, matching bobbles on both sides. But you could also, obviously... You know, drop shot this, even cut this down and just drop shot a half of it if you want a little finessier presentation. I'd split that right down the middle. I'd use the round head for my hook and have this little flat discus get two worms out of one. So that's a, another way to, to make one bait last you twice as long. Uh, what do they got? This? They got it on a wacky rig, naturally. Plenty of room for the wacky ring tool. They've got it on a drop shot. There you go. Um, they've got it even on a finesse rig on a shaky head. Uh, I probably, you know, I wouldn't really do this on a finesse uh, shaky head rig, but eh, it's each drone. I'd rather use a thinner, uh, you know, a coved down uh, 
finesse worm for a uh, for shaky head. All right, next, that one, uh, the Lake Fork Magic Fry is $3.79. Last on our list for today is a package of Daiichi Extra Wide Gaps. Uh, it's only a two pack. It's for MTB because it's D3946 MTB. So these are specifically packaged by Daiichi for Mystery Tackle Box. Um, twin, a two pack quantity, one red and one black nickel plate, and are $1.80 for the two pack. That's a fair price for two hooks from Daiichi, the world's sharpest hooks, which, no, they're not the world's sharpest hooks, but if that's your marketing ploy, go with it. Let's see what else they, ooh, we got some, some little tickers in, oh, there's our sticker. They didn't short me this month. We got our American flag bass sticker. So that's okay. And we got ourselves two little pamphlets. We got ourselves a little card that shows, uh, there's the filthy frog. They're advertising it, obviously. And different locations that you'd want to fish a frog. So you've got places like a down tree, around a dock, uh, obviously matted grass, grass lines and weed lines. Um, that's great places to fish, um, you know, top water with any top water bait. Frogs, um, even a sub top water sinking toad or buzz baits, what have you. Whopper ploppers, great, great places to fish them. Um, where to fish the Yodo worm? So here's a little pamphlet marketing the Yodo worm with a couple of things how to rig it. Uh, there you go, there's a vertical jigging it, vertical rig, uh, horizontal rig. Uh, let's see what else. Horizontal, horizontal, horizontal. There's a, there you go. Fishing it like a drop shot, just nose hooked. So that's pretty cool. But yep, they got that. And then same thing. They have their standard boiler bait. Um, you know, lake, your lake or pond, how it's designed. Basically showing you the elements of different types of ponds. Some ponds are just fish bowls with even, uh, even bank area. Some ponds have points and, and inlets for lakes and rivers and tributaries, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But this is a little, you know, a little basic demographic of what you should see on different, uh, different types of waterway uh, uh, landscapes. Anyway, that's that. So we've got the dual crankbait, $14.99, the Guggen Squad's Frog, Topwater, $8.99, Bill Lewis's MR6 crankbait, $7.99, the Jawbones Death Wish, soft plastic minnows, uh, they are $6.36. We've got the Perfection Lures Football Head Jig for $5.99. 10,000 Fishes Those Yoda Worms, $5.29. The Lifted Jig's Little Thin Swim Jig, that's $4.99. Lake Fork's Magic Fry, those worms, uh, those are $3.79. And finally, the two pack of hooks for $1.80 for this month's Mystery Tackle. And uh, next video is going to be something that I've been waiting for for a while. But it finally came in the mail today, if you can't see that long tube and that that little orange little treat back there for me um i got a really good deal on the reel that rhymes and uh the rod i feel will, will suit it properly so uh i'll talk to you about that on the next video for this video i hope you enjoyed i hope it was entertaining or at least informative if not like share and subscribe if you haven't already subscribed as always I appreciate you guys spending time with me, uh, being part of this family, and that's what this is, Foulmouth Fishing Family. We're all hookaholics, um, and it's not something to be ashamed of. It's, uh, it's great to have some communing with nature, and fishing is one of those sports that uh, I think passes, passes time as one of those great outlets, as long as you're doing it respectfully and spot responsibly, and uh, I hope all of you are. So from me to all of you, happy fishing, and uh, as always, I'll catch you on the next cast. Peace, Hogalix.